it's simple on paper, or excuse me, on PowerPoint. You get a 3D model. You add to the model what's missing so that you have a construction level of detail model. Um, you take that information and you begin to leverage it for uh, the constructability review. Uh, we, do, we do both. We have a process where we will just do constructability analysis and give you a constructability report saying, here's all the things that are wrong with this uh, design. Or you can go to coordination resolution that says, here's all the things that are wrong. Show that. This is what we call our coordination resolution report. Here's what we did to fix it. Agree or disagree with that. So that makes sure that you have that team input all the way through, but you're saving the amount of you're saving a lot of time by centralizing uh, and, and doing that by location. Uh, getting the main runs coordinated early is really important. Again, I mentioned it earlier, not just for against the systems themselves, not just MEP, not just mechanical against electrical, against plumbing, against fire protection, but getting getting those um, uh, those slab penetrations and any of those structural um, uh, issues, um, beam penetrations, out of the way um, early is really important, uh, very, very helpful to the project and overall time. Performing, I can't emphasize enough how important it is, even if it's just from a, a good business standpoint, you have to have a way to document effectively and accurately what you're doing for your client. Not just the, the benefits, the technical benefits, but to be able to clearly show your client, here's what we found, here's what we did. I've always been a great uh, uh, believer that you never want to do something for your client without being able to tell them and show them what you did. Uh, uh, value is very important in a, in a competitive marketplace, and being able to show them the value of what you're doing is important. So a process, again, matched uh, or married to technology that enables you to clearly um, show what the BIM is doing for the project. Uh, you cannot underestimate the value of both process and technology. This is a, uh, a sample of how we identify um, those issues. And in this case, if it were just a constructability analysis, um, we would say, you know, here's what we found. Uh, we didn't fix it, but, you know, this is what we found. This is where we found it. Um, this is the problem that we see. Um, and this is who should look into this and try and, and, and uh, take care of it. We always, in our process, show the 2D drawings as well. It may be that somebody thinks or some, we didn't model it correctly. So we show the 2D next to the 3D image to make sure and, and, the, and showing the collision so that if the team sitting down says, wait a minute, I don't think you modeled that right, we can say, well, okay, here's the report, here's the drawing sheet, here is the 3D model taken from the drawing sheet. Let's look and see what we did wrong. We've created a lot of new things as we've gone through this process. And, and job descriptions is one of the things that we've worked a lot on for our modeling team. We now have what we call the, the VICO Coordination Resolution Modeler. This is a, this is a, a specific type of modeler that, that we charge with fixing uh, all of the collisions that we find according to a system priority structure. Sometimes, as you all know, you've been in the business for a little while, that it's not so simple as a system priority structure. And our, our, our CR modelers understand when it's time to raise a flag, identify something that says, we, we followed system priority structure, and this is what we did, but we think that you need to take another look at this subcontractor, engineer, uh, because we're not really sure. That reporting format, it's actually a template that we designed, is really important because if you have 
thousands of collisions, you want to be able to prioritize them. The template is set up for that. You want to be able to give very clear visual identification of the uh, of whatever the change was, what the original status was, and what the change was. And you want to be able to explain what it is and why you did it. Um, this is all really important because when you give this report to the subcontractor, they don't just need to see the finish. They need to see what you had before you did that because they may say, wait a minute, you should really do this differently. So that kind of reporting process is really critical to your whatever coordination effort you're making. As you can see, what we will show is we will show not we will show obviously the new run, but we will show the previous run as well. As you can see, it went through this foundation element, and we'll identify exactly what we did to change it. And sometimes, again, system priority structure, it it works probably 70 to 80 percent of the time, but there's 20 percent of the time that it's not going to work. So you have to document everything you did. You have to identify it. You have to explain it so that people, after the fact, can sit down and say, wait a minute, let's do this differently. Another important component, and people overlook this, if you're going to do coordination resolution by location, somebody, somewhere, has to, to generate 2D coordinated documents. Another lesson we learned along the way is that once the model is coordinated and everybody agrees on the coordination, there has to be a 2D output because I still, the plumber, the, the, the mechanic, the fire protection guy, the electrician, they're still not walking around with a laptop held up so that they can lay out their work and um, install their work. So you still need a, a set of uh, 2D coordination documents. And we'll do that. We will set those up. And as you can see, we give annotations, um, measurements off of column line. We give elevations. All of those things are important. Remember, it still has to be commuted to the guy that's going to do the installation uh, out in the field. Sometimes one of the things that you find is you are missing information. Your reporting process has to enable you to report information that, that's missing as well as information that is there but wrong. We developed a, a, a process that we uh, use markers. And I don't know if you can see them uh, clearly in this image, but there are actual pictures up here, little icons. Uh, they look like pyramids here. In your 3D model, what we do is we place those next to every single um, uh, uh, collision that we've identified. And attached to that, linked directly to that um, pyramid or that marker, is the, um, the specific number of that particular clash that links directly to all of the detail for that clash. You can go through the model. You can say, oh, wait a minute. Let's take a look at this. What specifically is this? Go to the, uh, the, the, go to the number. Go to the link. Open up that information and say, oh, OK, I see what this is. This is what we should do about this. Again, documentation, being able to show everybody exactly what it is that you're doing and how you're doing it. Here is a, a, a just a. A, a quick example of our constructability report. So again, we give a description. Um, uh, we tell exactly what it is. We give a location. Um, we give a grid reference. We give a sheet reference. Again, showing the 2D and the 3D next to each other, right? Um, modeling assumption. We tell you what we assumed in the modeling. Um, we will tell you if whether or not we resolved it or we didn't resolve it. And sometimes, as you well know, we can't resolve it with a simple system priority structure. It really needs to get, you can see this is remaining. This is not resolved. Um, 
so that we need to get some input probably from the engineer, maybe just from the subcontractor to say, we didn't feel comfortable resolving this issue uh, with the simple uh, system priority structure. We need to get some input on this. It makes a, a very nice presentation. Um, we have a level of severity is high. This is something that we know we have to fix. Um, the trades that are involved, the ID number, all of that very conveniently built into a template report so that everybody can be on the same page. And finally, once you do get it all set up, we now can take that information out of the model, right to the, the project site using, using a total station so that we can use the laser-based theatolite to place all of those elements. Or you can actually go backwards. These arrows should be going backwards, too, because you can use the total station to take shots of uh, locations of elements in the model, uh, in the actual project site, back to the model to see if they agree with each other for as-builds. 